everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another word from scripture from the Lord. We're in Matthew chapter 14, verse 12, as well as Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for another beautiful day. Thank you for just goodness and mercy. We love you and we praise you. Help us to learn and gain wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Matthew 14, verse 12. And his disciples came and took the body and buried it. And they went and told Jesus. All right. And so the second scripture that he gave me was Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. Either make the tree good and its fruit good or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. All right. And let's go to the previous verse. And his disciples came and took the body and buried it. And they went and told Jesus. So we know that this has to do with martyrdom. The Lord is bringing this up again. And, um, but this particular conflation, it's different. So when we're putting it with Matthew chapter 12, we're analyzing the trees. So let's look at the trees of Matthew 14, verse 12. So we got um, John the Baptist, right? His tree is bearing good fruit. Why? Because he is producing fruit of the kingdom. Um, he is able to um, go out, not only prophesy and tell of Jesus um, coming and the kingdom of heaven being here right upon us at hand. And then he's also um, saying, make a straight path, right? And he that means he's declaring the one to come as king. And so he's letting the people know that the time that they live in is very important and that the Messiah has come, right? An, an end to the old way and a new way coming up. All right. And so um, he he's letting them know that the Holy Spirit is to come. Um, why? Because he's baptizing them with water, but he's speaking of one who's going to come with fire. Right. And so, um, he is, uh, a, a really bearing much fruit for the kingdom. Right. So that is what his fruit. And remember it, it's out of the, uh, abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. And, and, um, uh, if you look at Matthew 12, um, you, you'll see a lot of, um, scriptures on the tongue right and and coming out of our treasure the treasures of our heart is what the tongue is speaking and so that where the bearing of fruit process begins right is what our tongues are saying why because our actions are birthed out of what our tongues are saying and our tongues are followed are following our heart and so what you're pouring in is good um, what you're pouring into your ear gates, your eye gates, that is what is causing your ship to sail in that direction. And that's where you're going to bear fruit. It could be bad fruit. It could be good fruit. So we need to be very careful of the words that we use. All right. And so another tree in Matthew 14 would be Herod, right? He is the one who actually made the declaration of, um, of of John the Baptist being killed, right? So um he was the one who actually gave the order, is what I'm trying to say. And so he was already pouring bad things into himself. We know that because he had the girl dancing for him who was his niece. And so um uh in 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 this um this was a bad fruit to bear, right? He already was teetering on um not wanting to be disliked by the people, but he was also not wanting to be disapproved of by Herodias, who was his brother's wife. So he he had a very distorted view of whom he should please, right? He wanted to please the people. He wanted to please Herodias, and yet he was willing to take his brother's wife. And he had his, his daughter you know, dancing before him. And that's all bad fruit. It's all fruit of those same bad tree, right? And and it's almost, it, you almost want to look at it as worse than what Herodias had done in asking for his head. Because to me, the person who can actually give the order or say yes or no is, is more, you know, important. And he's, and he's flagrant, not flagrant, um, 
um, misuseful and, and not being a, a diligent, not being watchful over his power, right? Because his tongue spoke a promise that he did not want to keep, right? And what what was the promise that, oh, I'll give you everything, anything up until, you know, him, him being king. He, she, he, he promised her it all. He was willing to give it all just because she danced for him, right? These are all fruit of bad trees, right? We don't speak things that we don't mean. We don't say things um, before time, before we've a, even judged the situation. These are all things that God is telling us to be watchful over. Um, if you don't want to speak, if you don't know, don't speak, right? So just, just hold off on the tongue, right? Because it's bearing a lot of fruit right now and you don't want it to be bad fruit. All right, another um, tree in this one is uh, Herodias. And, you know, her, her intent was evil from the beginning. She was bearing bad fruit, you know, and and that was an evil request. Why? Because she was embarrassed. Um, John the Baptist was um, one who had called her out in public, you know, for what she had done in um, being with her her brother her husband's brother and divorcing her ex-husband um and leaving her for him and so she she was you know not bearing good fruit from the from the beginning and she more than likely already wanted his head but um she used this opportunity of this promise um she was very um very much um taking advantage of the situation and using it for evil all right and so she waited for that opportunity to to request um him to be killed and more than likely she had already asked him something like that but you know there was no justification but because of this promise he he went ahead and and granted that request and then also um two people that stand out to me as as bearing um good fruit are the people who came and took the body right they are being faithful to the master um, even though the master is dead to be faithful to someone when there is no um no way of getting favor of, about it is showing true faithfulness why because more than likely they were being faithful to god right they they loved god they loved hearing um the words that john the baptist was speaking because he spoke of god he spoke of the messiah and so they were faithful to come and retrieve his body and bury it and and also tell um the one who he had spoken of as being the messiah that he had died so they were bearing good fruit, right, for the kingdom. And, you know, um, the, the Bible speaks of John the Baptist as being, you know, one of the greatest in the kingdom, right? Um, and, and yet even the lowest would be greater than he. But um, he was faithful. He was faithful to God. So we have to just remember, you know, our words are there even when we pass on and go to heaven, right? Our words still have effect in the earth, right? And you want them to have good effect in your children, in the seeds that you have sown, in the in the vineyards that you have planted. You want them to be growing up as good and not as evil. We need to speak to our children with good hearts. If we're managers or or people who have people working under us, our words need to be good, right? Our words need to follow the things that we believe. And they are a direct result of what we're pouring into our heart. And that is through our ear gates and our eye gates. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. Thank you for truth. Thank you for the prophetic word through your word, Lord God. It's amazing. And we say thank you. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. Cleanse our hearts. Cleanse our minds, Lord God. Show us what we are to be. Show us what we are to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Cleanse our tongues. Cleanse our garments, Lord God, of every stain, Lord Jesus, help us to walk uprightly with you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And one of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down and read his word, talk to him about it, um, dialogue with him, ask him questions about things that you're confused about. And he's going to begin to speak to your heart. Just wait on him. You have to learn how to wait on him. And um, one of the best ways is to just wait, right? Um, the, over time, you'll begin to hear that still small voice responding and you'll begin to differentiate between um, your voice and his voice. So remember, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So seek him diligently. Don't just do it haphazardly and walk away. Wait on the Lord and he's going to renew your strength. Amen. He's going to show you what it is that he's speaking about. Um, also Jesus is one of the things that he wanted us to do, um, while we're here occupying this earth is to go and find places to fellowship, right? Um, go to a church home, allow Holy Spirit to lead you to one. Um, and also so that you can stay sharp in the word of God by being around other believers is the word, what the word says, so um, go out, do that. Go be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And then also um, go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.